In this video, we'll discuss about the classification of vesicular bulbous lesions. It is the most commonly asked question. Um, I'll be giving around five or four, four classifications according to different bases so uh, that you can attempt it well in your exam. So let's start uh, by the first one according to Ungol. It is uh, acute or it can be chronic. Now to remember this you can remember HV alright or you can remember HEC. So by H we have herpes simplex, herpangina and foot mouth disease then E we have erythema multiform C chicken pox you can also mention about herpes zoster now for chronic remember BBC pill just remember there is nothing for I all right so uh, B for bullus pemphigoid then B for bullus lichen planus C for psychiatrical pemphigoid then again we can write C so chronic herpes simplex then by P pemphigus I remember there is nothing from I and L will be a linear immunoglobulin A disease. Now this was on the basis of onset. Now we will classify them on the basis of the predominant uh, clinical presentation. So clinical presentation. So first is predominantly vesiculus or vesicular and predominantly bullous. So again remember just HV for this. So V alright. So herpes uh, simplex virus hand foot mouth disease then herpangina and varicella now on the predominantly bullous uh, you can remember this uh, by remembering pub but uh, with an e all right so basically peb all right or you can remember it as pebble but we just need these three alphabets all right so by p we have pemphigoid now remember B will come many times okay around four times and E will come two times okay so this is four and this is two okay so by E we have erythema multiform epidermolysis bullosa now turn for B bullous pemphigoid bullous mucus uh, membranous pemphigoid then bullus lichen planus and bullus empatico now we will classify it the third time according to the uh, type of just give me a second yeah so now we will uh, classify them according to the histopathological basis histopathological So either it can be intraepithelial or it can be subepithelial. So like you can suppose it be the one like lying here and this. Okay. So in intraepithelial you can remember it by Pam have family. I know it is grammatically wrong but you can. So by P we have pemphigus. By E we have epidermo 
lysis bullosa by m we have mucus erythema multiform by h we have hand foot mouth disease herpes simplex virus by v we have varicella by family we have familial benign chronic pamphylitis okay now by sub epithelial or uh, you can remember it as b c del okay all right so by b we have the bullous pamphigoid by c we have psychiatrical pamphigoid by d we have the dermal erythema multiform either it was mucus erythema multiform here it is dermal okay so e for epidermolysis bullosa then l for lichen planus or wait l for no l for linear immunoglobulin a disease then uh, there is the fourth classification in which it is about infectious or it is non infectious now it is quite obvious just mention all the diseases that are caused by virus the skin diseases hand foot mouth disease then varicella herpangena all right now here what you will do is uh, you will write most of the lesions that occur uh, like uh, you can write about pemphigus because they are all auto uh, immune most of them at least so you can write about ectodermal dysplasia you can write about uh, erythema multiform you can write about bullous pemphigoid and all right so this is the thing now i have one more classification which is quite a, a very genuine classification and i think it should be mentioned first when you write an answer and then you could mention all of these because that actually collects all of them so vesiculo bulbous bullous sorry lesions now first one is the viral diseases then we have immunological condition then we have hereditary condition this one is easy to remember as well not saying that others are difficult but uh, you need to uh, do attempt the question with this classification as well okay so for this you must remember there are four h uh, you can remember basically hummer okay but with a v and these spellings okay or you can rem uh, remember about four h movers so uh, suppose there's there's some company of movers and packers and they are named as 4h and mover so by i mean there are going to be 4h so viral you have might come to know you might have come to know that it is going to be related to herpes most of it so the first one being herpes gingival stomatitis then herpes labialis then recurrent herpetic stomatitis herpangena hand foot mouth disease so we have covered h and r by m you have the measles and by v obviously uh, we have the varicella zoster or you can just mention about varicella all right uh, now let's talk about immunological now to remember the immunological uh, you must remember um b c d okay a b c d but not the a b c d then remember peel but remember that the first two alphabets in or the basically the first alphabet is two times yeah so peel is basically spelled as this right so just remember you are putting one extra p here all right just remember this much now uh, let's start by b we have the bullous by c we have the psychiatrical pamphigoid uh, by d we have the dermal or dermatitis herpetiformis then by p we have pamphigus then pamphigoid then by e erythema multiform then epidermolysis uh, bullosa sorry and uh, by l we have lichen planus now for hereditary just remember h e d okay this is easy now uh, by h you can remember haley haley's disease by e you can remember that it is uh, epidermolysis bullosa congenita 
by D, you can remember Darrier's disease. Okay. Now in miscellaneous, there are just two. So you can basically, rem it's easy, but yeah. Uh, you can remember it as I ohm. Okay. So impetigo and oral blood blisters. M for miscellaneous. All right. So this basically completes our classification of vesicular bullous lesions. I hope you understood. I tried to make it as easy as possible with all the mnemonics. I mean, uh, some of you you only have to revise the mnemonics all over again and again so that you actually uh, remember them properly. I know if they I. I didn't find any point in making a complete sentence of the mnemonics because it usually is uh, confusing in the exam. Uh, so this is an easy way to remember and I hope you liked my video. Thanks for watching. Do like, subscribe, share and yeah, thanks.